Collision with Peter Goldstein from TopTal. Thanks for joining me. Happy to be here. All right, so first up, I wanted to get you to describe what you mean when you say generative AI. It seems everybody has a different definition. Sure, generative AIs are software systems that can generate novel text, audio, image, video that's realistic sounding and sounds human. They've been trained on internet scale databases, so they produce content that's human appropriate. Um, with memory, they can engage in conversations, they can respond to feedback, which is a really important capability for the system. So talk to me about the session that you're doing today. You are hosting a master class where you're talking about reimagining applications. Can you talk about what you will teach the audience there today? Of course. So I think it's important that we're in, we're in the early stages of generative AI being applied to applications, but we can already see certain very important things happening. One sort of tasks that previously had to be done by humans, things like summarizing text, are being taken over by generative AI capabilities. That frees up humans to more creative activities. I think what's coming soon and has started to appear is a more uh, major change to how users interact with applications. So rather than having a search interface where you try and figure out what search terms would get you the result you want and then navigate, Instead, you'd have a chat bot that I want a conversation with you and would produce for you the item that you're looking for. Moreover, you might be able to say, it, you will be able to upload video, audio, images to help better describe what you want. So for example, if you're shopping for an outfit and you're like, I've got this pair of shoes and I want something that matches with it for a formal gala, you'll literally upload a picture of the shoes and the application will give you uh, a response. I think another point that I'll be covering is the importance of personality. Updating brand to be more personal and personalized. So generative AI makes it possible to generate a custom interaction from a brand perspective with each user. And that's going to be a very powerful modification to these applications because you'll develop an emotional relationship with your web applications. Let's dive a little bit further into how generative AI can really improve the user experience. I think some people understand technically how it can work, but will this be a better experience for users online? I think it will be a vastly better experience. You know, the modern user experience is essentially 25 or so years old, right? Tech search, maybe it's 10 links, maybe it's a bunch of thumbnails, but ultimately that's the experience that's been with us since not quite the beginning of the web, but certainly since about the turn of the century. What this is going to allow is a much more customized and human experience for that interaction. You'll be able to talk to it like you would talk to another person. And that will allow it to produce content that's customized for you. What's more is you'll be able to interact with it in places that have been challenging in the past. So you're, you know, if you've set up a fitness program and you've got your uh, Amazon Echo set to wake you up to go for a run, you won't just get a beeping alarm, what you'll get is an encouraging voice and a tone that's right for you from a coach that you have an ongoing relationship with. Those kind of experiences are going to be game changing and make, the, make computer systems much more approachable for the average user. When we look to the future of generative AI, specifically photos and videos, what does this future look like? Because we are still in early days right now. So this is a much more challenging area. Uh, anyone who's spent time playing with Midjourney or Dolly or even Adobe's generative uh, fill knows that at this point, you can't trust what you see. So one, on one hand, you'll be able to generate images, audio and video based on descriptions. You'll be able to use the right input to get you the right output. I want a video that has an image that looks like these. I want, I want this image to include these features with text. Um, but the downside is you won't be able to trust anything, image, text, audio, and we'll need to move to more uh, sophisticated cryptographically based systems to secure and authenticate that information. One last question for you. What do you hope people who attend your session today walk away with, that one piece of knowledge? Sure. I think what I'm hoping to convey is just how big the change is going to be. Right now there is, as is understandable, a big focus on how can I use this right now to solve the workflow problems I have right now. 
And ChatGPT got to 100 million active users in three months by basically solving those problems for people. But there is another step coming, similar to earlier technological revolutions, and I want people to walk away with the understanding that it's coming, it's going to be bigger than they probably think, and here are some of the things that will be part of that revolution.